Okay, so in this video, I am going to discuss the sample period calculation for the FIR filter, and I have taken the same good old FIR filter given by the equation y n is equal to p of x n plus b of x n minus one plus c of x n minus two. So this is a specific example of a three tap FIR filter, and a direct form block diagram architecture is shown and shown here. And I have already discussed this in my previous lecture. So now I have to calculate the sampling period for this filter. So I have drawn this filter and sample XK. Let's say XK is introduced to the system, and the output of this shift register is XK minus one and this shift register is x k minus two, and uh, let's say that k is sample number d. So this x k is the sample that is introduced to the system at present instant, and this is the previous sample. So x k minus one is representing sample c, and x k minus two is representing sample b. Two sample k minus 2 to sample previous to d so at this point we have sample d at this point we have sample c and at this point we have sample b and i am expecting output yk that is equal to p of xk plus b of xk minus 1 plus c of xk minus 2 for input xk so xk is d xk minus 1 is c and uh, xk minus 2 is b so the system will perform this computation and it will generate output yk and then after receiving output yk i can introduce a new sample that is x of k plus 1 so let's say that this sample is sample number e so now Sample E is introduced to the system, and now this sample XK that is sample D will be moved to this point via the shift register. So XK plus 1 is representing E, SK is now representing D, and uh, the sample previously at this point that is sample C will move to this point via the shift register. So now x k minus 1 is c so this competition will be performed and the output will be y of k plus 1 for input x of k plus 1 and similarly after this computation a new sample let's say f will be introduced k plus 2 x sample and this competition will be performed and output y of k plus 2 is expected now this output is sampled via switch so this switch is in open state now and whenever the output is available at this point this switch will get closed and the sample will be transferred to the output point and after that the switch will get Open. So at this point, I am assuming that uh, the sam the sample that output sample that is y of k will be collected instantly. Whenever the switch is closed, the sample will be collected instantly, and at the same point, I will have the output at this point. And after collecting the sample, the switch will get open because uh, and now the system will process the next sample and this output may get changed there may be variation in this output at this point so to preserve my sample yk from any interference or noise or any intermediate result i will open the switch and when the next output y of k plus one is available i will close the switch sample it and again open it so let's say that the switch is getting closed after the time ts 
so let's see the sample d was introduced at t equal to 0 okay and uh, after some time i have received yk now after yk i will receive yk plus 1 so at this instant the switch will get closed so what should be the time starting from 0 what should be the time at which i should close the switch so that i can sample yk correctly okay and when yk is sampled the switch will get open and next output that is yk plus 1 will be available and at that time the switch will get closed again so let's say that the, this time interval is ts and similarly this is also ts assuming that i am sampling the output at regular inter interval so now have, this is sampling and this ts is representing sampling period so i have to calculate this sampling period also the new sample initially i have introduced xk and uh, this sample will move to the right side via this latches and these latches are sequential circuits that are driven via clock so let's say that these are a positive edge triggered flip flop so whenever a positive edge is appeared at its clock signal the input will get latched and that will be appeared at the output and no matter whatever is the change in the input after that it will not reflect to the output till a new clock pulse that is a new positive edge is appeared that is the concept of sequential circuits so let's say that these are positive edge trigger flip flop and these are positive edges okay so let's say that i have introduced xk and xk is representing sample d so previous to that c was at this point i want that c should move to this point and at this point before c there was a sample b and i want that at the same time b should move to this point so this sequential circuit this shift register should be driven via same clock for synchronization because d will come at this point at the same time c should move to this point and b should move to this point this process should be synchronized so let's say that this shift register is driven via positive edges and the interval between these edges is tc also known as clock period tc so now we have two terms tc that is clock period and ts that is sampling period okay so at first clock edge xk will come here and the previous sample will move to this point and this sample will move to this point and after the result is obtained that is yk i will introduce xk plus 1 so for that i want that xk should move to this point and uh, this xk minus 1 should move to this point so xk minus 1 should move to this point and xk should move to this point and at this point i want xk plus 1 so i need to provide a positive edge of the clock and the time interval between these two edges will be tc and to introduce xk plus 2 i need another clock pulse and after time interval tc so here i have also assumed that i am sampling at regular interval and i am providing the clock at regular interval to calculate ts and tc we have to calculate the computation time of the system so so now 
talking about multiply operations so a of x k so b of x k minus 1 and c of x k minus 2 let's say for sample input x k the result is a of x k plus b of x k minus 1 plus c of x k minus 2 so for this result first we need to multiply these samples with a b and c respectively so this multipliers this multiplier that is multiplier at m0 m1 and m2 so the input to m0 is xk the input to m1 is xk minus 1 and the input to m2 is xk minus 2 and this xk xk minus 1 and xk minus 2 is available to this multiplier m0 m1 m2 respectively at the same time at the same instant so this xk xk minus 1 and xk minus 2 are available to the multiplier at same instant so multiplication operation is concurrent the multiplication a into xk b into xk minus 1 plus c into xk minus 2 will be done at same instant parallel so this multiplication operation is concurrent so the time taken for multiplication operation is let's say it is tm and where tm is computation time of the multiplier now to generate the output adder a1 need to add the signals from a0 and m2 a1 is doing the final computation we are receiving output from the output of this adder a1 so adder a1 need input from m2 and m0 so to perform computation a1 needs input and it will receive from m2 and is m2 and is and a0 is also receiving input from m1 and m0 so first a0 will add these two signals from multiplier m1 and m0 it will generate output and let's say it is taking time t so a0 needs result from m0 and m1 it will receive after time tm because tm is time taker for multiplication so after multiplication e0 will receive signal from multiplier m0 and m1 and then it will add and uh, e0 will take t a time to add the result to generate the result let's say t a is computation time of the add now when a0 will perform its computation the output from a0 is available so output from m2 was already available after time tm plus ta output from a0 is now available now a1 can perform its computation and it will take further ta time to add samples from a0 and m2 So, computation time is Tm plus 2Ta, Tm for one multiplication operation and 1Ta for adder A0 and second Ta for adder A1. So, add operation is sequential. Add operation is sequential. one after another it is not concurrent like multiplication operation so total computation time is tm plus t2 2 tm okay so let's say that xk was introduced at t equal to 0 so output will be available at time t greater than equal to tm plus 2 t because after introducing sample xk that is at time t equal to 0 tm plus 2 ta time is required to generate output yk so output will be available at time t that is greater than or equal to tm plus 2 ta greater than in the sense that if i am not introducing the next sample that is xk plus 1 so this output yk will remain available at the output so 
for this t greater than equal to tm plus t t n the output will be available it means that minimum time to generate output is tm plus t t n so the switch should close at t greater than equal to tm plus 2 ps so t minimum is tm plus 2 t so this is t minimum so i can say that t sampling time is greater than or equal to tm plus 2 t so the new sample that is xk plus 1 should be introduced or should be provided to the system after receiving output yk okay and here i have mentioned that whenever a new sample is introduced to the system at the same time i have to provide the clock first so that this samples will move right synchronously so this will be governed by this t clock okay so t clock should also be greater than tm plus t so i have to wait at least for this this much time to receive output yk for the corresponding input xk after that i can provide new input xk plus 1 and whenever i will provide xk plus 1 the shift register will receive clock pulse so assuming that sampling and clocking is uh, at regular interval ts minimum should be equal to tm plus 2 ta and t clock minimum should be equal to tm plus 2 ta so in this case you can see that t clock and t samples are same and that is equal to greater than equal to tm plus 2 ta whatever is the clock rate the same amount of time will be required in sampling period we can make this to quantity same so whatever i have discussed till now can be derived from the concept of critical path time for the same circuit i can calculate sampling interval ts and uh, clock period tc simply by calculating critical path time so in this circuit the critical path is this path or this path both are same so critical path time can be calculated by adding the computation time of this element along the path so this is multiplied followed by two added so let's say that tm is computation time of multiplier and t is the computation time of adder so critical part time is tm plus 2 tm so critical part time is the longest computation time among all the paths so there are other paths available as well like uh, this one and the computation time of this path is tm plus t so we have three path available the computation time of this path is tm plus t a the computation time of this path is tm plus t a plus t a that is tm plus 2 t a and the computation time of this path is tm plus t a plus t a that is again tm plus 2 t a so the critical part time is the longest part time among all the paths that is tm plus 2 tm so this much time is required for the generation of output so this t sampling should be greater than or equal to tm plus 2 tm and in this case sampling time can be equal to clock period time both time can be same we can synchronize this time and both if both times can be seen then i can write that sampling time is equal to clock rate time is greater than equal to tm plus 2 ta time by. assuming that sampling is done at regular interval and, uh, and the clock pulse is and the clock signal is a 
periodic square wave. So whatever we have discussed till now, we can conclude that to increase the speed of the system, we need to increase the sampling rate. And one way of doing that is use similar system in parallel. That is called parallel processing. Like this is one system, one input, one output. So let's say it is generating one sample in one unit time. So the sampling rate is one. Now if you want to double the sampling rate, so use two system in parallel give two samples simultaneously you will receive two outputs simultaneously so sampling rate is doubled that is two samples per unit time for n system you will receive n samples per unit time if sampling rate of the single system is one sample per unit time so just it is in it increase the fact it increase by factor of n at the same time cost will also increase by n because you are using similar kind of hardware so the cost of one hardware is C, so cost of N hard hardware will be N times C. Another way of doing this is decreasing the sampling time because sampling rate is inversely proportional to sampling time. So decrease the sampling time, sampling rate is increased. And how it can be done? The sampling time depends on critical part time that should be decreased and critical path will be decreased when the length of the critical path is decreased and how to do this the answer is pipeline that will be discussed in next video